Hello, my name is Joy Wang, and I'm a product manager of Google Cloud. Today, I'm going to demo some cool features about Google Cloud monitoring. Speaking of monitoring, creating meaningful dashboards is one of the most important tasks for developers, DevOps engineers, and SRE engineers. Today, I'm going to talk about a few useful existing features you may not be aware of, as well as several new features we recently launched with a live demo. Now, let's switch to a Google Cloud monitoring project and then navigate to the dashboard page. The first thing to call out is a sample dashboard library tab. In this tab, we currently have 69 dashboard samples that covers compute, including GKE and GCE, storage, data processing, networking, database, tooling, and third-party applications such as MongoDB and Oracle database. To see what's inside the sample dashboard, for example, this GKE cluster monitoring, click on the preview button, and the description tells you that there are 18 charts on this dashboard click on the thumbnails, you'll be able to get an idea what this dashboard is about. And then you can click on Import Sample Dashboard. After Import, then this dashboard is now created as a custom dashboard. Now let's switch in from Editing Mode to View Mode. and wait for some time for the data to generate. There we go. The samples on the mo cloud monitoring UI are automatically synced with our open source sample dashboard library on GitHub every week. We welcome you to contribute to the GitHub repository. Now let's switch back to the editing mode. Noticing that there is a JSON editor inside this editing mode. Once you click on that JSON editor, a inline JSON editor appears at the bottom of the screen. You can add it, export, or import JSON specs and apply changes here without the need to use the command line and see the changes immediately. This feature will greatly improve your operational efficiency to achieve infrastructure as code. We also have Terraform support for the dashboard API. Now, let's move on to the third feature I'm going to talk about today, the dual y-axis. So on this chart, we have the CPU utilization in the unit of percentage here and Let's add another metric here. So let's say, for example, we add a matrix with a different unit. For example, disk read bytes. And you can pick the access you wanted to use to be left. So you can overlap the CPU utilization and the disk read bytes on the same chart with a different unit. That's the dual y-axis. The next demo I'm going to do is a few things under this view options gear icon. So let's click on the view options here. The first thing I wanted to call out is this outlier mode. So enable this outlier mode. You just need to click on outlier mode and then you pick the top three time series that you wanted to display and rank them by the average. And here, instead of seeing a number of 
time series, you see only three time series. This is going to be very useful when you're in a troubleshooting and trying to figure out where are the anomalies or the top, the top, uh, the max numbers of, uh, of your metrics. There's another feature in here is the compare to past. So when you enable the compare to past, you can select compare to exactly one day from yesterday. Noticing on this chart, the time, the time axis on the top is the current time and the bottom time axis is exactly the same time a, a day ago. The next feature I'm going to demo is alert chart. Noticing that in our chart library, we recently introduced a few new widgets. So alert chart is one of them. With alert chart, it allows you to pick alert from the existing alert policy. For example, here, I choose a CPU utilization high alert policy here, expanding, you can use the mosaic layout to expand this, and noticing that on this alert policy, there's no instance opens. It also, you can see the threshold where you set up the alert. You can also create alert policy directly from this alert chart and go through the same alert creation process that you would create alert from alert policy page. So for demo purpose, I'm going to skip this, uh, the entire process and move on to the next feature. The next feature I wanted to call out is set time zone for dashboard. Noticing that on the time selection here, you can start it, you can set your time zone. So your team that is across continents, across um, globe is able to set the chart to their local time. That's the set time zone, set time zone for dashboard. The last but not least I wanted to demo is the log panel, logs panel. So here, we recently launched a logs panel that allows you to pick a project and use the query editor to filter down the logs that is interested to you by resource. For example, here, I'm going to use Cloud SQL database and then pick one of the database ID here and filter down the logs to be specific to this resource. You can also, now you can see some logs appearing in the logs panel. You can also filter by severity and do text search on this filter logs uh, filter. That's it for today. If you have any feedback or questions, please go to Google Cloud Community site and search for Cloud Operation Suite. Thanks for watching.